Welcome back, everybody, to Rams Up, your favorite L.A. Rams podcast. You can also follow us on YouTube. We've got some great video content. Our YouTube handle is at L.A. Rams Up. You can follow us on Instagram as well. I'm your host, Mark. Let's get to it. So the 49er championship drought continues. They lose to the Eagles 31-7. The Niners have not secured a Super Bowl championship since 1995. For context, that was the year Patrick Mahomes was born. That was the year Toy Story premiered in New York City. Bill Clinton was president and O.J. Simpson was found not guilty. It's been a long, painful 25 plus years for 49ers fans. Can't say I can really relate to that. The Rams have two championships and four trips to the Super Bowl in that time. But as a Rams fan, it was a pretty glorious result watching the 49ers fall in spectacular fashion to the Philadelphia Eagles. Can't really blame them too much. Everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong. They lose their starting quarterback, who is actually their third string quarterback, Josh Johnson comes in, their fourth string guy, and then he goes out with a concussion. Then the injured quarterback has to come back in and try to get it done. He can't throw, and it really starts to fall apart on the 49ers at that point. Wasn't the classic game that you'd hope for in an NFC Championship game? That's for sure. We had punts hitting broadcasting wires. We had refs really missing some calls badly, I thought. We had the 49ers losing their composure at the end of the game. So you had two very good teams playing for the right to go to the Super Bowl, and one of them does not have a quarterback that can throw the ball more than five yards. So wasn't the game you would hope for at the end there, that's for sure. Quickly unraveled on the 49ers, and the Eagles rolled. So the 49ers all-in approach falls spectacularly short But they do come away with an NFC West title, so there's that. My prediction for this game was 30-21 to in the Eagles' favor. And you know what? If it weren't for those quarterback injuries, that might have been a pretty spot-on prediction. I had also called out Brandon Ayuk as a player to watch in this game. Boy, did he disappoint one catch for 10 yards at over 1,000 on the season. And I also predicted Devonta Smith would have a big game for the Eagles. And he did. He he had the one big catch, although it really wasn't a catch. But this game was really more about the Eagles' defense able to stop the 49ers' running game, their ability to run the ball on the 49ers, especially in the red zone. But it really comes down to that situation with the 49ers' quarterback. It's difficult to take away anything from this game statistically as far as the 49ers' offense given their situation at quarterback. If you're a Niner fan and you're hoping Debo Samuel was going to step up, that didn't happen. Three catches for 33 yards, six carries for minus nine yards. How is that even possible for that guy? Christian McCaffrey did have a good game, 15 rushes for 84 yards, and the one TD, he was a beast. He's the guy that really stood out, and a guy that I'm not happy. Rams are going to have to deal with him next year. And the 49er defense actually had a good game. This is a case of a really good defense holding their own for the most part. But when your offense is that pitiful, eventually you get worn down and you start giving up plays. We've seen this with the Rams. The Rams defense plays really well, but the offense is just so pathetic that eventually that defense just breaks and starts giving up some points. We saw a lot of that back in the Jeff Fisher days, actually. We saw it a little bit this past season. And we saw it on Sunday with this 49er defense not being able to hold up against the Eagles with their offense just punting it back to the Eagles over and over again. So where do the 49ers go from here? Well, I'm going to give you my fearsome four things that 49er fans should be worried about that the 49ers have to figure out. Number one is, who is their quarterback? Is it Brock Purdy? Is he the guy? Is he a quarterback that you can entrust the future of this franchise in? I mean, this team has a really good roster. I'm not sure how much we know about Brock Purdy. 
if he is the type of quarterback that can win tough playoff games, win tough games on the road against strong opponents. He's obviously going to be the front runner coming back next year. But hey, Trey Lance is coming back. He was a first round pick. The 49ers gave up so much to have the chance to draft him. And he could be a really dynamic player if he can play quarterback at the NFL level with Christian McCaffrey back there and Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, Greg Kittle. This could be a really scary offense. And then there's rumors that Brady has eyes on the Niners. If he continues his career, he might want to play for his favorite childhood team, right? The second thing they have to figure out is free agency. They're not in as bad a shape as the Rams, not as many unrestricted free agents, and they do have $13 million in cap space. But some key guys could be heading out. Jimmy Ward, Robbie Goode, Mike McGlinchey, Samson Ebucom. And, you know, Samson is a guy that I think the Rams could make good use of. They need some help on the edge there, outside linebacker. But he may have burned his bridges with the Rams on the way out, had some criticism about the way the Rams used him, so maybe the Rams won't be interested. The third thing they have to be worried about is this past season they had the third-place schedule and the Rams had the first-place schedule. That gets flipped. The Rams will have the third-place schedule, the 49ers the first-place schedule. And, you know, I have a lot of respect for the 49ers and what they did this year. But let's just say it, they had a pitifully weak schedule. Their road schedule included the Texans, Bears, Broncos, Panthers, and Falcons, and that's about it. Two of the rivals in the division had really off years, talking about the Rams and the Cardinals. Next year, first place schedule, they get the Eagles, Jags, and Vikings on the road. They get the Cowboys and Bengals at home, so it's going to be a tougher road for them, a tougher schedule for sure. Now, they're a good team. It's not like they're going to go 8-9 and nine or 6-11 and 11 or anything like that unless they get hit with all the injuries like the Rams did this year. But it's not going to be a cakewalk for them, that's for sure. And the fourth thing they have to figure out, the biggest thing they have to figure out, in my opinion, is Kyle Shanahan the right coach for this team? He's obviously got a great offensive mind, but his failures in the playoffs are starting to pile up. It's kind of the gorilla in the room. Is he the guy that can take the 49ers to the ultimate goal, a Super Bowl championship? Sunday's game had a couple bad looks for him. He didn't make that challenge, and I think that was a strategic error at the end of the first half. They're down 14-7. to They get the ball back with 136 left. Their fourth-string quarterback in there. They pick up a quick first down, which is good. That's what you want to do in that situation. Pick up a first down. But after that, I'm telling you, run the ball. Force the Eagles to burn timeouts. Punt the ball away. But it was obvious they were trying to be a little too aggressive there. Johnson in the shotgun. He fumbles the snap. The Eagles recover and go up 21-7. to To me, it's pretty obvious the smart move there would have been just to punt it away and get to the locker room and figure out how you can stay in this game, how you can win this game with Josh Johnson playing quarterback. But instead, they're down 21-7, to and it spiraled out of control there. Now, in Shanahan's defense, Sean McVay might have done the exact same thing. So obviously, Shanahan is coming back. (laughs) There's no doubt about that. But if you're a 49ers fan and you're being completely honest, You have to have your doubts about Shanahan's leadership abilities and his ability to outcoach some of these other guys at the NFL level in big playoff games. The stage is set and we're counting down to the battle in Arizona. And there's no better place to get ready for NFL action than DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 57. I'm telling you, I'm taking the Eagles to cover. I don't care what the spread is. Eagles are going to thrash the Chiefs. That's my prediction. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code TPPN. New customers can bet $5 on Super Bowl 57 and get 200 in free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code TPPN. 
Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void in Ohio. See show notes for details. Now let's talk about this AFC championship. The Chiefs escape with a 23-20 win. Man, the last three games between these two teams all decided by three points. One of them went to overtime. The last two, the Bengals won. This time, it's the Chiefs. These two teams are building up quite a rivalry. I think it's going to be something special when these teams meet over the next few years. Joe Burrow versus Patrick Mahomes. And I have a feeling we'll still be hearing from Josh Allen on occasion this time of year. But for now, it's the Bengals and Chiefs. And I'm watching this game. I was on a live stream following it, chatting among a bunch of other podcasters. And I couldn't help but feel like the Chiefs were the better team in that first half. But the Bengals just kept hanging around, hanging around. And when that happens, you have a feeling something special is going to happen. And it finally did. First play of the first quarter, the Bengals are 4th and 6 from the Chiefs 42, and they decide they're going to go for it. Tony Romo couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. First thought is they're going to try to pull him off sides, but no, they go for it, and Burrow throws one up for Jamar Chase to go get it, and he does exactly that, coming down with the ball at the Chiefs' 6-yard line. Bengals go in and score a couple plays later, and it's 20-20. to And then Burrow throws that interception one Kansas City defender tipping it to the other. Wasn't that eerily similar to what happened last year when the Bengals intercepted Mahomes? But the Bengals hold the Chiefs. Chiefs pass on the 54-yarder. Give it back to the Bengals. They're at their own four with 230 left, but they have to punt it away. And then that punt return and then that personal foul on Mahomes on the sideline and the Chiefs get the game winner. Now, I'm going to have to tell you, over the course of this game, I thought the refereeing was really questionable, and it's really sad to see in a game of this magnitude to see some of the penalties, some of the calls and non-calls, and that second, third down the Chiefs got. And I know that was the right call, but it's still a bad look. And that taunting call in games like this, and even the foul on the sideline on Mahomes, Yeah, I guess it's a foul. It's a personal foul. It's not that bad of a hit, though. He's just kind of sticking his arm out and giving Mahomes a last shove. If I'm the referee, I'm not throwing that flag. And I don't care what anybody else says. I'm not throwing that flag. I'm not letting that call decide who goes to the Super Bowl. Keeping the flag in my pocket, make the Chiefs earn it. Felt so bad for the Bengals. And I was really hoping for a bengals Eagles Super Bowl. I think that would be much more entertaining, much more attractive. I'm starting to think that the Eagles-Chiefs might even be a bit of a mismatch. I'll have to give it some more thought. We'll have a preview of the Super Bowl later on. But right now, that's my initial thought. I predict it as soon as that game ended, the spread would be about two and a half in the Eagles' favor. But I'm taking the Eagles to cover solidly if that's where the line stays. So really disappointing to see the Bengals fall like that, but got to give the Chiefs credit. Mahomes and Marquise Valdez-Scantling getting it done. Tip of my hat to those guys, especially Scantling. In the end, I think the Bengals were the better team. I think the Bengals deserved a trip to the Super Bowl, going on the road and losing in the end like that to a very good opponent. You tell me who the better team is. I don't think it's the Chiefs, but I think the Eagles would have either one of their numbers. I think just think the Eagles Bengals would have been super entertaining. And now we get to listen to two weeks about the Kelsey brothers. Aren't we lucky? Back in a second with some final thoughts on these two championship games. So on to Arizona in two weeks, the Eagles versus the Chiefs. Seeing the odds at two points as I speak, I think it will end up being two and a half. I doubt it will get to three. Odds makers don't like round numbers like that, and three and a half would just be too much. Like I said, though, 
take the Eagles to cover, I'm telling you right now. Overall, Championship Sunday was a great day of football, but hopefully we won't remember the bad looks, a punt hitting a broadcasting wire, apparently, giving the 49ers great field position. The chain gang in that game having to go to backup equipment? Never saw that before. The refs getting that personal foul wrong in the Eagle 49er game. At least that's how I saw it. Everybody is okay with refs calling the penalty on the second guy. I did a sports pet peeve on this, and I'm sorry, this is just bad training. It's accepted. Everybody says they do it. Everybody knows they do it. They even admit they do it. Why do you throw a flag on the second guy? Makes no sense. That's just the way it's done at this point. And all those penalties on the 49ers, right or wrong, that's not what fans want to see, unless you're an Eagle fan, of course. And then in the Chiefs game, that extra down, I know it really wasn't, but still, we found out a little bit late that, hey, that down didn't even count. Maybe that's more on the broadcasters than anybody else, but was not a good look. There are so many weird things going on in these games. Uh, I, you know, the 49ers losing both quarterbacks. Christian McCaffrey was maybe going to have to play quarterback for them at the end. I was almost expecting one of the goalposts to fall over in the middle of a field goal. That would have kind of fit in with the vibe on this Sunday. And then to top it off, the 49ers losing their cool at the end of their game. Something about those Niners... Very good team. Something's missing in the culture there, in my opinion. I'll never forget OBJ consoling Debo Samuel after the 49ers were eliminated last year. OBJ showing a lot of class. Haven't seen a lot of that from the 49ers of late. Let's check my Super Bowl standings. After this upcoming Super Bowl, looking over the last 25 years, The Patriots will hold on to the number one spot with 21 points. This is three points for a Super Bowl win, one point for a Super Bowl loss. That's the only way to do standings, in my opinion. The Rams will stick to the number two spot with eight points. They've got the two wins and the two losses over the 25 years. The winner of the Chiefs-Eagles game will move into a tie with the Broncos, Giants, and Steelers for third place with seven points. But if we're sticking to the 25-year window, the Rams need to pick up some points next season or they're going to drop a little bit. They will lose credit for that 1999 Super Bowl win. Or we could just adjust our window and maybe we'll just start looking at 30 years instead of 25 years. But let's just hope the Rams pick up a Super Bowl win next year, shall we? Problem solved. Of course, if they did and we opened that window to 30 years they'd be in really good shape. Other NFC West teams in this 25-year window, the Seahawks stuck at five points with a win and two losses. The Niners with their two points with those two losses. Again, no titles for the 49ers since 1995, a few years before the greatest show on turf. That's how long it's been. And Arizona bringing up the rear with their one loss. Kurt Warner was their quarterback in that game. Hey, check out our Super Bowl quizzes, our Rams Super Bowl quizzes. We'll be dropping those on our YouTube channel as shorts and on Instagram as well. We'll try to do one a day between today and the Super Bowl. See how well you know Rams Super Bowl history. Should be a little bit of fun. And we are also continuing our mock drafts online, posting our results in short form and long videos. So make sure you check them out. We have our 10th mock draft online available in video form on our YouTube channel. Our handle there is at LA Rams Up. Now, if you're unaware, YouTube has switched to a handle system as opposed to a traditional URL. So if you go to youtube.com slash at LA Rams Up, you will be on our channel. That's it for now. We're going to come back later in the week The focus of our midweek drop will be Rams free agency. We're going to rack and stack Rams unrestricted free agents, listing them in priority as far as which ones we want to keep. And we're going to come back in a week or two, not sure exactly when. We're going to have a guest on that's going to talk draft prospects that the Rams might be interested in. 
He is going to educate us on how well these guys' games will translate to the NFL. Hopefully by then we'll have some coaching updates as well. Raheem Morris still out there. Mike LeFleur is our offensive coordinator. You all know that by now. Lots of moving parts on the coaching front. We'll get caught up on that on Thursday. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. Visit our website at ramsup.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Until next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there. Music courtesy of the YouTube Audio Library. Tracks featuring Bar Crawl by Track Tribe. Buckeye Banzai by Vans in Japan and Crimson Fly by Hamama.